and those kind of things. So it's been it's been really good. It really is good to be in the house of the Lord today. And I think I can I think every one of us can just earnestly say that because we genuinely feel it. And um, you know it's just a special special time. And I'm, I'm tickled to death to be with you guys again this morning. It's been a few weeks, and then it'll be a few weeks again before I'm back. But uh, Lord willing, I'll be back up here again. So always look forward to that. Welcome this morning. And uh, let's enjoy ourselves and, and join together as we're going to worship together. Let's, let's open it in prayer if we could. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so, so blessed to be in your presence this morning. And I thank you, dear God, for uh, bringing each one of us here this morning. I pray for each person that's here, the families that they represent, those that can't be with us, those who are sick, and those who are hurting. We just pray, dear God, that you would... Uh, just put an extra sport, portion of blessing upon them, dear God, and just pray that you would uh, continue to lead, guide, and direct each one of us. I pray that you would be with Coach Moore this morning as he brings the word, and I just pray, Lord, that you would give him the words that we're supposed to hear this morning, that we can take uh, from these four walls out into our everyday lives, and, and not just our lives, but that we can share it with those that are around us as well. Again, we just thank you so much for being who you are, and um, we give you all the praise and all the worship, dear God, because you are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. The first song that we're going to do today is um, uh, Showers of Blessing, another one of those good old hymns. And I looked up a couple of things about this and, and uh, found something a little interesting about it, um, or at least it was to me. It was written by Daniel Webster Whittle in the 1800s, and um, really the story about this with him was really his conversion story. It's pretty powerful. I'm going to read some of it because I don't have a, the greatest memory in the world, but it said that Major Whittle lost his right arm in the Civil War and spent some time in pris as a prisoner of war. While he was recovering in the hospital uh, from wounds that he had incurred during the war, he came across a New Testament. Although he had read it and was convicted by the words, he was unwilling always to surrender his life to Christ. One night, an orderly in the hospital woke him up and asked him to come pray for a dying soldier. And Whittle declined. He wasn't going to do it. He didn't want to do it. The, or the orderly told him, I'm sorry, I, I, I saw you reading the New Testament and I thought you were a Christian. Convicted... Uh, the major set in and, and, and agreed to go. And here's, the, here's his personal testimony about that incident in his own words. He said, I dropped to my knees and I held the boy's hand in mine. In a few broken words, I confessed my sins in Christ and asked Christ to forgive me of my sins. I believed right there that he did forgive me. I then prayed earnestly for this boy. He became quiet and pressed my hand as I prayed and pleaded for God's promises for him. When I rose to my knees, the, the young man was dead. A look of peace had come over his troubled face, and I cannot, believe, cannot but believe that God, who used him to bring me to the Savior, used me to lead him to trust Christ's precious blood and find pardon and hope to meet him in heaven one day. You know, we all have opportunities before us. It may be that we're sitting in church and glance over and see somebody that's going through a troubled time or maybe they sit in a different pew on a different section and we don't get to them every Sunday and something comes in our mind that we need to give them a call or we need to send them a card. Guess what? We do. <laughs> we need to do that. Uh, we're about to sing Showers of Blessing that probably wouldn't have been on the agenda this morning had this guy not done what God wanted him to do and to go pray for that soldier. You know, oftentimes we think, well, we are going to be blessed as well, but, you know, in that situation there, God knew what the outcome was going to be of the soldier. He just wanted this guy to believe to go and, and, and seek God. And that, that's what made him a Christian. And uh, it's really, really neat. It's a neat story to me because we all need to wake up and understand we've got a lot of things in front of us, a lot of opportunities in front of us that we can, can reach people. And we need, to, we need to be active and be proactive in that. So, speaking of proactive, stand up 
And let's sing 467, There Shall Be Showers of Blessing. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead on the second. There shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us or falling, but for the showers we plead. Let's sing number four. There shall be showers of blessing, oh that today we might fall. Now as to God we're confessing, now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us or falling, but for the showers we plead. Okay, Coach Moore's favorite part. Everybody gets to walk around and hug everybody as we sing Family of God. Y'all make sure you hug him. He needs it this morning. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain and cleansed by his blood. Joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this song. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain and cleansed by his blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, looked around. I didn't see any visitor, visitors, but just to make sure I don't miss anybody, I want to, uh, if we do have some visitors, and we may have some watching on Facebook or YouTube, so uh, we want to welcome the visitors. If you're here, uh, we're, we're going to ask you to fill out a visitor's card that's in the back of the pew in front of you. Place that in the offering, tithe and offering box in the back, uh, so we'll have a record of you being here. Uh, then for the announcements, but before we get to the announcements, anybody have any uh, praises or prayer requests? And like I say, if you don't have one, you ought to have the other. Absolutely. If you're a first time visitor watching on uh, YouTube or Facebook, please put that in the comments so we'll have a record of you there. Awesome. I want to say thank you, everybody, for praying for um, our parents. My mom and dad are doing well. They're at home. Bruised up, a little banged up, but they're getting over the, the, the wreck. The car wreck. And, and also for uh, our friend, uh, Sharonda. She's flown here the last time. She had her baby. Uh, he's still in the NICU. She had him early, but he's doing much better. And hopefully he'll get to come home on Wednesday. All right. I got a praise. Last praise. Monday morning early, we had a storm come through here. And two limbs that was hanging over the church ended up in the middle of where. Okay. So I kept it didn't hit the gutter, didn't hit the church, didn't hit the air conditioner, nothing. 
Amen. Yeah, the tree that was in the middle, I don't know if y'all noticed, it's completely gone. The good Lord took care of part of it, and uh, Junior got some guys to take care of the rest of it. Amen. 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 Is that a miracle? It is. Amen. It is a miracle, but that's what God does. Yes. You know, people try to explain it with science and this, that, and the other, and uh, it, it's God. Anything else? I want to give praise for a very good friend of mine. I've been praying for him for years, and he just uh, contracted a flesh eating bacteria about three weeks ago and left him in the ICU for 13 days. He left the hospital on Friday, and the number one thing he said. I want to be more active with the church. I, I want to get rid of a lot of people I'm carrying that I shouldn't be carrying. So. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Absolutely. God will get your attention. Amen. Duke. Uh, God has blessed me with the love of that beautiful blonde woman for 39 years. Yeah. 39 years. And, and Carol tries to step out of you so that, because uh, tomorrow will be 36 years for us. <laughs> and, and then to make it easy on my memory, it's also Kelsey and Zane's anniversary tomorrow. <laughs> Anything else? I, I do have, uh, we need to remember, uh, and there's probably so many, so many that uh, I will forget, but... Uh, Remember Craven and Margie. Uh, Craven, uh, he's in the hospital, and just just to make a long story short, he's got some fluid around his heart. Uh, part of his heart is swollen. He's got some spots in his lungs. They don't know if it's blood clots or just fluid there, but they've got him on Lasix, and all of this is due to COVID, so we need to make sure. And he's in uh, the, the cardiac unit down at Big Baylor, so we need to make sure we keep them... Him and our prayers, and I also, think he's having a heart is he having a cath? I haven't. And uh, just remember, Margie. I I know just the few messages I've went back and forth with Craven. He's more concerned with Margie than himself. Right. Very important that we don't get sucked into the complaining and that we know nothing can separate us from the love of God. Right. Absolutely. Well, you know, I was, uh, I've been on vacation and I, I, my grandmother's full blood Native American. Uh, so I, I've been, been reading some stories and, and watching movies and stuff. And, uh, and one of the sayings is that, I, that I picked up and it's crazy how you pull stuff out of a whole movie. You, you pick up one little line. But it says, uh, you always feel safe when you're away from the fight. As Christians, I think we need to get involved in the fight. And I know I've been told time and time again, you don't talk about politics from the, from the pulpit. But I've shared this morning about the World Health Organization. And our, our country's fixing to vote, I think, uh, to, to give the power, all of our medical power to them, which means one man can shut down our country. He can shut down Dallas. He can shut down New York or shut down this. We need to pray that the good Lord will intervene in, in these situations and make sure that the people that are making decisions for us are making the correct decisions. And I know it's all in God's hands, you know, and I also think that God, and in my heart of hearts, I believe that God is waiting for his people to raise up the prayers. And prayer works. Uh, I can tell you. Time and time and time again, every time I pray, prayer works. And the minute I stop praying, the good Lord taps me on the shoulder and goes, hey, 
Where'd you go? I was here waiting on you. So, uh, anything else? Lauren. Absolutely. What she's saying is, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, faculty uh, from the schools that are excited to get out for the summer. But, you know, every every child in, in our school systems, they're not as fortunate as, as a lot of us. And they're not so excited to get out for the summer. You know, they don't have the care. They don't have the parents home to take care of them because they're working. They don't have the meals. They don't have they don't have a lot of things. You know, they're not excited to get out for the summer. You know, so we need to keep those those kids and those families in prayer. Amen. Anything else? Hey, GA, I will say this. Last Sunday I, when I was preaching, I, I said I always look right over here. Well, there's, there's Ada and, and Larry again. But it looks like everybody got their feelings hurt, so they all moved over to this side. <laughs> I, I tried last week to look over this way a little bit more, but uh, yeah. Anyway, if there's nothing else, uh, I want to invite the men up. And while we are inviting the men up, I'm going to touch on just make sure you remember Hugh Gracie as he's in uh, boot camp. And also our, uh, the, the Real Gospel Radio Network. I, I want to remind you all of that. And Steve just told me this morning there's two national programs going to be on that this morning. You can go to our website and get on it. Or, uh, and it's even got a, uh, a hotline now that you can call in for prayers and give prayers. And that's 855-940-REAL. And that's 855-940-7325. If you have anything, any prayer requests, you can call in and, and pray with somebody there. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day that you've given us. Lord, most of all, we thank you for being the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, we thank you for being the Holy of holies. And we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. Lord, I thank you for the week that you've given me. Lord, I didn't realize how tired I was. Lord, and you've rejuvenated me. You've let me speak to people that I've never known and I'll never see again. About Jesus. Lord, I truly thank you for our blessings. Lord, I thank you for the Holy Spirit being involved in this church. I thank you for the men and women that come every week. Those that aren't here, we just pray that you will give them a safe trip back. Lord, I just thank you for the encouragement, for the, uh, the, the confidence and just everything that just this church, your church, provides for us. When we come in and we, we are seeking the Holy Spirit, he's here every, every week. Lord, I do thank you for the opportunity to come before this crowd, for this group, and speak about you and to talk about the blessings. Lord, there are so many negative things going on in our world, and Lord, you know what they are, and we lift those up to you. We lift up every name that's in our prayer request. Lord, we lift up every prayer request that's been mentioned before we prayed right now. We do lift up our leaders of our country, of our nation, of our state, of our cities, of our schools. Lord, and we do lift up these children. That aren't looking forward to school being out. Lord, I pray that you will wrap your loving arms around them. Lord, you will put people in their lives that will provide for them whether it's just leadership or love and food and necessities, that you will touch them in a special way. Lord, and when you do, I hope that you also plant a seed that they ask, where did it come from and who gave it to me? And there will be somebody there to give them that answer. 
because we know it's you. Lord, we pray for this service. We pray for the songs that we'll be singing. We pray for G.A. and his message. We pray that you will speak through him. Lord, prepare our hearts to hear your, your word. Lord, forgive us where we fail you. And again, we do thank you for our blessings. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, I was thinking the other day uh, what I would sing like or pray like if God was right there in front of me. And um, you've heard those people that just, don't, don't you love to hear? There's some people you just love to hear pray because they just seem like they're just talking to God and singing to God. And so I thought about that. If, you know, if we, if, if, how would we sing this next song at Calvary if, if God was right in front of us? Well, guess what? Wherever two or more are gathered, he's here. Amen. So he's right here with us, so let's do that. Let's stand and sing 138. Years I've spent in vanity and pride at Calvary. Y'all sing it loud now. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me. Died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. By God's word at last my sin. Then I trembled at the law I'd spurned Till my guilty soul and glory turned to Calvary Mercy there was great and grace was free Pardon there was multiplied to me There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary Let's sing the last Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan Oh, the grace that brought it down to man Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span At Calvary Mercy there was great and grace was free that and there was multiplied to me There my burdened soul found liberty At Calvary Coach Moore may not have to preach today Because we're about to sing Amazing Grace You probably know it, it's 3.30 in your book It doesn't get any better than this one So let's all sing this one together Amazing Grace um, I don't know which ones we're going to sing. We may sing all of them. But that's okay. Y'all just pay attention. We'll get through it. Let's sing Amazing Grace together. Amazing Grace, how sweet. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
at church when we've been there ten thousand years bright shining as the sun we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun good singing y'all be seated you know, um, I was kind of hoping that when I knew she was going to come in here and play that I might get to sing a special with her, but something tells me she's kind of sweet on this old guy right here, so I can't compete with that. I'm going to do something that's kind of risky. And that's, no, this is my first time. And that's try to express a thought without going completely off the wall. Uh, when Verna asked us to sing, we didn't know what the message was going to be, but we didn't know what just about any song you sing is going to be appropriate if it's a gospel or spiritual song. But after listening to the praise and the prayer request you know, a little while ago, I think this song is appropriate. He giveth more grace. He giveth more grace when the burden grow greater. He sendeth more strength when the labors increase. To added affliction, he addeth his mercy. To multiplied trials, his multiplied peace. His love has no limit, His grace has no measure, His power has no boundary known unto men. For out of His infinite riches in Jesus, He giveth and giveth and giveth again when we have exhausted our store of endurance when our strength has failed ere the day is half done when we reach the end of our hoarded resources our Father's full giving is only begun. His love has no limit, His grace has no measure, His power has no boundary known unto men. For out of His infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth and giveth and giveth again. His love has no limit. His grace has no measure. His power has no boundary known unto men. For out of his infinite riches in Jesus, Giveth and giveth and giveth
supposed to turn that thing on, aren't I? Only if you want us to hear you. Well, Lois, Lois Ann tells me to leave it off, but so I, I sometimes. <coughs> but listen. <coughs> Seems like everything we talk about is talking about problems nowadays, and I don't know. This, well, we're going to, I guess, preach on or talk on or whatever you want to call it. Uh, is take a stand or take a knee. That's the name of it. And, uh, folks, that's kind of where we are. Now, you know, over here, there's three families that's not here. Uh, two of them I know where they are. One of them I don't know for sure. I got an idea. But uh, let me tell you something, folks. There's not any more special place in the world for you to go and bring your kids than to church. And folks, for goodness sakes, for goodness sakes, listen to what we're going to talk about today. Because, you know, we're just talking about take a stand or take a knee. If we're Christians, let's stand up and be Christians. And quit bowing down to every little thing that comes along that we, you know, that somebody tells us is okay. And you're so blessed if you're here. You know, I was just thinking about what I was saying here when I was to Steve sitting up here. I knew Steve's mom and daddy. I knew them. I've known them since the day he was born. That's the result of what Christian parents can do. Now, there's a whole lot of more of you are exactly in the same boat. I was in that same boat, and I tell you, I shudder to think about what I might have been had I been raised like some kids are today. You know, because you kind of honor him every once in a while in your life. And for goodness sakes, folks, just listen to what we're going to talk about today. It's not anything fancy. But you know the Scriptures, Romans 13, chapter 1, I mean chapter 13, verse 1, Acts chapter 5, verse 25 to 29, and then they're used to turning to them. I'll talk to them some more after a while. Los Angeles tells me I have to talk about Scripture now before we get started, so... She asked me yesterday, well, what are you going to read before you start? I said, well, I'm not going to read nothing. I'm just going to tell them what it is, and then we're going to talk about it some as we go along. But listen, you know, some of God's commandments and statutes that we have read in the Bible, commandments and so forth, are easy to follow. Some of them are a little more difficult to follow. But you know, there's one that says, thou shalt have no other gods before me that all of us know and all of us understand, I think, what it is. But how many of you do not have any other gods before God? You know, God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, right here. He's the only perfect person to ever lived, And He shed His blood for us, for me and for you. And why in the world don't we stand up and be the kind of example we should be to our kids? Young people are in trouble. I see so many of them, and, and there's always been a problem. I was young, and things were different. You know, I wanted to do things different probably than my mother and daddy wanted me to. But somebody has got to set an example, and I think this church, Mustang Baptist Church, may be where a revival has to start. Something has got to happen in this country. Something's got to happen in this county. I mean, this is ridiculous what is taking place in the world right now. Some of the leaders that we've got and the stand that they're talking and taking the things that they're talking about doing. And we're sitting back here just being so naive. Don't make nobody mad. Well, you better make somebody mad because there's some people going straight to hell that are kin to me. There's some of them that are kin to you. Everybody in here has got some, folks. And that is not good. Now I get on to the sermon, I guess. But you know, you have no other gods before me. And what's the biggest god most of us have, or most people have? Money, I think. You take money, it may be your job, but you go back to money. What am I? Money, money, money. You can buy anything you want, just about. It's always been that way to a certain extent, but it's more so right now. Because money is running rampant. I don't know where in the world. I didn't get all of it, but somebody's got a bunch of it. But you know, when we accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you became a Christian, we turned away from our old way, supposedly, and we become a new person. 
because we chose to trust in Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, and we got His Holy Spirit to live right there. And because of that decision that we made, however many years ago it might have been, we have been specially and specially and specially blessed. And I'm going to tell you something. Nobody has been blessed more than G.A. Moore. Nobody. And I can look thing after thing after thing after thing that's happened in my life. You know, and I was thinking about this this week. The greatest thing that ever happened probably is my wife, besides my parents and stuff. And you know, I mean, and I don't. She gets mad when I say anything about her. But you know, I how in the world in the world did I wind up with Los Angeles? <laughs> my gosh! If there's anybody in this area that was poorer than we was, it was Los Angeles folks. We were running a race, probably, to who was the most poor people. There was a whole bunch of others there, too. But, you know, when things like that happen, I can just tell you stories about that that's that, amazing. But how in the world? I was a big old college guy, I thought. Then all of a sudden, God put things in my life that drew me to that situation where it happened and how in the world that ever took place? If somebody, that's, you can't even write a picture or write a book about that kind of stuff. But when we accepted Christ, the biggest thing is, and I tell everybody now, I don't marry a whole lot of people, but I've married a few. If you can't get on your knees with your wife and pray, folks, something wrong. But you'll show me somebody, before they get married, they get on their knees together and pray, you're going to see some great things happen in that place. You're not going to have to worry about divorce. You're not going to have to worry about a whole lot of things because they're going to be God. But how many of you, I bet, I mean, I'm not supposed to say I bet up here. Uh, that's forbidden nowadays. But I guarantee you that some of you, you know, I don't know what, I don't know what happened. But you know what? We're human. We're not perfect. And we haven't been. And God, in His love and grace and mercy, <laughs> has forgiven us of our sins. And He keeps forgiving us. And He keeps forgiving us. And He keeps forgiving us. And you know, it's true to say that each of us have experienced times in our lives, you know, when we've fallen short. And we know we've fallen short of what God expects us to be. Because we hit those valleys, and you hear about the valleys and the hills and all that stuff. I heard that when I was growing up. Yeah, they're going to be. I heard an old man <laughs> used to be Sunday school superintendent when I was a kid. Every time he got on Mr. Wooten, he got up to give a Sunday school report to church. He said, well, we're in a valley today. Y'all think about it. Maybe we can get up on the hilltop by next week. He's talking about the attendance and stuff. But, I mean, it's fun. I can still remember those things. But you know what? I'm so thankful that I was in church to hear those things because there's a lot of people my age that wasn't in church. But I didn't have any choice about that. But, you know, you know. so what the standard is that God has set, you know, what do you think God really expects of us? What do you think God really expects of you? Just put it on you. What does He expect of you? Not your wife, not your kids, not anybody else, but what about you? What does God really expect of you to do? You know, there's so many people that call themselves Christians and they do all this little stuff that Christians are supposed to do, but they're some of the biggest hypocrites that there is. You know, it, it, it's unreal. Our culture is very confused, it's very distracted, and it's very, very divided in determining what's right and what's wrong. Who's behind all that? I can tell you. Satan is the king of getting people split up and separated and thinking different things. He, he's, you know, he has divided more nations and more churches and more communities and more families than any other. That's just the way he operates. If he can get you to fussing and griping about all this stuff, then he, you're in business. He got doing what you want. And all of us have been there, folks. We have all 
get tempted to do things that we're not supposed to do. And you know there's a lot of reasons for that. But Satan is dividing our nation and deceiving the population. And he's getting to where it's harder for you to speak to your neighbor and so forth about going to church or about being a Christian or whatever. You know, I've told you this time and time. It's easy to be a Christian when you go to church and everybody else there is Christian. And you can say, yep, I went to church and I sat with old Joe Blow and he said, we Christians, yep. What about when you get out on the street corner and you see the things that are taking place, folks? There's things taking place in the streets and they're taking place in the schools and they're taking place in the folks. If we don't do something, you know, it's not going to be good. The people that worry me, people that's going to suffer is my grandkids, my kids, my grandkids, and great-grandkids. They're not going to have what I have. They're not going to have the opportunities that I had. Things are going to be different because nobody's taking a stand right now. Their parents won't take a stand because they want to make money. Hey, don't mess with my money. Your money, you know, I heard one old boy say, <laughs> not supposed to say stuff like that, but he, he, they said, that sucker got more money and Carter got pills. You know what his wife said? They can put every bit of it in there with him in that casket when he dies, and it'll all burn up where he's going. <laughs> Love that money. Well, that's what a wife said about a husband. What, about, what would your wife say about you? We're not going to get into all that either about what the wives <laughs> say about it because there's lots of talk that could be going on. But let me tell you something, folks. It's <laughs> a nation divided against itself cannot stand. There's an old boy named Abraham Lincoln who made that statement back in 19, 1858, June 16th, 1858. He made a statement that said, A nation divided against itself cannot stand. He said, I believe this government cannot stand permanently divided. Now, y'all remember that was years ago when that was about a slavery issue and about other... It ain't any different today. It ain't, the slavery was just a thing that they used. Right now, it's abortion. Right now, it's something else. Right now, it's something else. It'll always be something dividing people. You know, you know when I went to, of course, I went, like I told you, I had to go to church every time they had something, vacation Bible school and all that. I learned some things, though, that I still remember. Red or yellow, black or white, they are precious in God's sight. Woo, yeah. Everybody believe that? Well, you said everybody said they did, but they don't. Every one of them, red or yellow, black or white, what colors are blood? Every one of them is the same color. It doesn't make any difference what's on the outside, folks. It's what you got on the inside that's important. And Jesus Christ shed his blood for you and me. He didn't go up there and throw a big party and start, you know, doing all this stuff. He shed his blood. And the blood he shed is the same color in all of us. And it don't make any difference whether you're rich or poor. It don't make any difference whether you're a Democrat or Republican. I guess a second Democrat and Republican. That is stupid. And folks, if that gets on your nerves, I'm sorry. But that is a bunch of bull. There should be one party, and that's a Christian party. Everybody, black or white, red or yellow, black or white, we all should be Christians. And quit splitting us up and busting up things and everybody getting mad at each other for something. You know, people can't stand Romans. I was supposed to read Romans 13 and 1. I forgot about that. I'll read it in a minute. Romans 13 and 1 said, Everybody must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. And what's that saying? God's still in, he's still in control. You know, is there times when we're not supposed to do what the government says? There sure is. There are just times. Now, at the same time, make sure you know, if you don't know the Bible, you don't know why you're supposed to do all this kind of stuff. But we should never let the government force us to disobey God. Jesus and his apostles never disobeyed the government for personal gain. 
They took a stand. When they disobeyed him, they got in trouble, and they paid the price. Some of them were beaten, some of them were threatened, some of them were thrown in jail, some of them were tortured, some of them was executed. But they took a stand. They did not bow down to what the government said because they did what God explained to them to do. And that's how we can do if we read the Bible. It's in the Bible. I'm going to give you three scriptures in a minute that you can just put... Well, I was going to say put in your pipe and smoke it, but I don't suppose to quit saying that too. But that's what it is. There's three verses in there. Just look at them, what it says. If you're going to read the Bible and pray, folks, you don't have to worry about everything else. I can tell you that. I guarantee it. But most of you ain't going to do it because it might be inconvenient and it might cost you a dollar. Don't worry about all that stuff. Some Christians take Romans 13, 1 different. Uh, some think that the government is so corrupt that they're not use messing with it. Some of them think there ought to be a separation of church and state, and you've heard all that if you taught any history. You know, I can, but, you know, some believe that you ought to elect Christian people to offices so that we could have the kind of leadership that we ought to have. That's what I really think. And, you know, so many people that you talk to now say, well, who are you going to vote for? Well, uh, I don't know for sure who, who you know, is he, what, what, what's, what's his qualification? If we had a Christian organization running, you could say, hey, he's a Christian. Well, I'd know if he was born again a Christian. But some people call themselves Christians. They're giving Christians a bad name because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. But, you know, liberty and justice for all. Let me tell you something. There's always going to be rich people. There's always going to be poor people. There's always going to be all colors of people. And uh, put God first, it just makes a difference. You know, uh, none of the scripture that you read will tell you to rebel against, rebel against, rebel against God. The only laws that you need to follow are the ones that God sets up, folks. And you can read it very, very, very plainly in the Bible. If you will pray and read the Bible, you will know exactly how you're supposed to act. Now, the problem is that lots of people ain't going to do it. And it has to be something that you do. Division, let me tell you something. Division is Satan's number one weapon. Division is Satan's number one weapon. It's a time-honored emblem, and uh, the Pharisees accused Jesus of being the devil. You know, they also spoke and said his kingdom could not stand, that it would all be divided. Let me tell you, let me read you some scriptures right here. And we was going to put these on the board, but I didn't know how to do it. In Matthew Let me see. Uh, Mark 3.24. Let's do that one first. Mark 3.24 says, If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. That's in Mark. Matthew says, Jesus knew their thoughts and said, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself cannot stand. In Luke eleven seventeen, but he knowing their thoughts said unto him, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a home divided against itself cannot stand. What is that saying, folks? What about our church? How many churches you seen split? I know there's some split. Been there, some of them. Let me tell you something. There comes a time you may have to split. If you go, you're going to have to do what God wants you to do. And the only way you're going to know that is if you're on your knees praying. And I don't say, I always say you're on your knees praying, but I just, that's terminology that I think a lot of people use. But you've got to pray. You can pray driving down and standing straight up. You can pray looking up. You can pray looking down. You can pray looking over here or there. You got to pray. It's right here is what's taking place. Pray and read the Bible. 
But you read those three scriptures, folks, if you don't believe what I'm saying. A nation cannot stand this divided. And that's what's happening. And it's happening in our schools. It tears me up, things you're hearing in schools. I mean, that's unreal. And I have schools that I know, things that are taking place in some of them that is un I can't believe that it's happening. But the reason it's happening is because of people like us that are sitting back and not doing anything about it. Now, I tell you what, boy, you get all upset. They run over your dog or your cat. You'll be down at the city council raising cane about everything there is. But they teach your kids about things that, they're not, not, that are not right, not biblical, and you don't say nothing. Well, I don't make nobody mad. They may take it out on my kid. Folks, I'm going to tell you something about the education. Now, I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't read this, but I was in education a long time. But they, before long, they're going to be more homeschools and private schools. That's the only thing that's going to work. Because we have let people take over the government that are making rules that we can't go by. Okay, what's going to happen when they make a rule that governs all the people like that? You better go to reading some of this world stuff that they talk about. Just read it and try to figure out what it is. A lot of you know, and a lot of you have no idea what I'm even talking about. It don't make any difference. Let everything go. I've been told this time and time again. Just don't make nobody mad. I'm, I'm sorry, folks, but I never did coach that way. I never did teach that way. I never did, you know, the only one that tells me what to do is Los Angeles. <laughs> but I, no, I'm serious. Folks, I think you've got to be, you need to be happy in your family. If you're happy in your family, the best way to be happy is serving Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If the head of your house is a Christian, you know it. And I don't care if men or women. It's got past where the men's supposed to do all this stuff. The women taking charge, and they're doing things that the men ain't got the guts to do. And I, I hate to say that. I told Lois Ann that a few times. She got mad. But you know what? Women are doing things because some men ain't got the guts to do it. And it should be, the men should be leading. Read your Bible. I mean, it don't say they're any better, but they should be leading. It all started with the men leading a little bit. And good gosh, boy, then things happen and happen and happen. We don't get into that story. But you know what? Growing up, let me tell you something. Well, I better go back up a little bit and get on this up here where I was on, you know, the earthly rendition of the church has suffered division multiple times and still divided. And they call it denominationalism is what I, I can't even spell that, much less, I can't even say it, much less spell it. But that's what it is. But if we're going to be a true kingdom of God, if we're going to serve God like we're supposed to do, we need to know where we are in this church. And in this church, now we promised one thing when we all started and all y'all ran on this. We're going to preach, read the Bible, and pray. That is two things that we're going to do. And we're going to be happy and we're going to hug people. And that hugging business got a little shaky there for a while, but we're back to hugging pretty good, I guess. I don't think we ever quit, I don't guess. But you know, folks, you've got to be happy when you come to church. And you've got to get right here and you leave it at the altar. We don't, have, we don't have enough people coming to the altar, getting on their knees and saying, Lord, help me. Help me to be the man I need to be. Help me to be the woman I need to be. Help me to be the kid I need to be. You need help. You know, there's going to be situations where you cannot obey God, both God and man. And that's going to happen. All of you have been there. If you live very long, you've been there. Then you must obey God and just trust Him to work it out. I can tell you that, folks. I believe that, and I could, I've lived it. We're to submit to God in all things where He divines our, our rule. Also, let me tell you this. Notice the teaching of the apostles in the early church. And I'm going to read this scripture. Acts 5, 25 and 29 says, Then came one and told them, saying, Behold the men who you put in prison. Now, they're in prison for doing things they're not supposed to do. These are Christians. 
They got put in prison for preaching out there. He said, they went to the old boy, well, I'm going to I've got to kind of tell a little bit about this so you know what I'm talking about. They was all preaching in the, in the temple, and they wasn't supposed to. They grabbed them, throwed them in jail. Well, what happened? Guard goes down there, looks in the jail. The door's still locked, but there ain't no prisoners. They're all gone. That's what it says here in verse 25. He said, one saying, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with his officers. Now these are people down there are supposed to have them in jail. He went down there and they got them without violence. They didn't do anything. Didn't they tell them? He said, when they bought them, they set them before the council. And when they went before the council and the high priest the high priest asked him, said, didn't we straightly command you that you not to teach in the temple in his name? And behold, there you are. You fill in Jerusalem with all this doctrine that we don't want. What'd they say? Read your Bible. In verse 29, Peter and the apostles, and Verna put this in the, in the bulletin, Peter and the apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. How many of you got the guts to do that? We will obey God rather than man. You know, they were in trouble. When we hear a clear ruling that's given by God on a subject, then we're to obey God, folks, period. Now, if there's no rule by God, then we need to buy, go by what the elected people the rules that they make. But we don't go against God's rules for anything. You know, God ordained the rulers of the nation. He's in charge still. And things are going to work out just the way they're supposed to. Now, I know that. And you know that. But what's going to take place between now and the time that the end times come? You know, I don't know why we have different groups and everybody fussing with each other and fighting with each other and all that kind of stuff. But I know one thing. Prayer works. And folks, we know at Mustang Baptist Church, prayer works. There's a bunch of people here right now that are miracles. God's still using them. And He's going to continue to use them. But let me tell you something. When you pray, pray every day. The other day said, I can tell you, when people pray, and you can tell, all of you can tell me this, people pray when they get in trouble. People pray when they get sick. People pray when they lose a loved one. People pray when, what about all the times when you've got everything going so good for you? And I'm talking to myself more than anybody. When you've got things going so good for you, why don't you pray then? Why don't you just say, Lord, just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're going to do. You know, we prayed before we come to church this morning. We pray every day, but I don't know. Bro, it's that wearing me out praying between me and you. I, I, we pray about everything that there is to pray about. And we didn't always do that, but she she was a little more, uh, I don't know if she was educated more in that area or not, but, you know, if she can't find something, well, let's go in here and pray about it. I mean, it may be a, a dog, a cat went down the road and not supposed to be gone. Let's go pray about it. We'll say, you know what? She can find things that I could never find in my life. Because she prays and prays, and she said, Lord, don't show me this and go show me that. And I'm so thankful. I'm going to tell you, and I'm, I'm saying this, I'm so thankful that I've got a wife like that. And you need to be, whether it's a wife or a husband or a kid or an uncle or an aunt or grandpa or grandma or whoever, there's people that are praying for you that are praying for you every day of your life. Amen. And there's people that you know that you've prayed for every day of their life. 
And for goodness sake, folks, set an example that's going to draw them closer to the Lord. Times are getting short, I think. You know, I, the rapture is going to have to hurry up, I think. Because we plan on going before we die, and, you know, I ain't got but 20 more years, about 20, that's what I figured. But let me tell you something. Just think about what your relationship right now is. If the world ends today, and you get hurt of this a whole lot, if you die right now before you get home, where are you going? Where are you going to spend eternity? And for goodness sakes, make sure you know. Because you can take care of it. And you don't have to come down and talk to me about it. You can get right on your knees where you are. You can do whatever. But you need to make sure that you have given your life to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is right there on the hand, hand of God. He's taking care of us. Amen. He hears us every day. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for what you do for us. I pray that you just help us to put you first. Thank you for all these people that are here, and especially ones that uh, just, Lord, if they need to make a decision, just help them to make that decision today. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Ooh, excuse me.